It's, uh, it's hot. It's getting hot in LA. I like it. Um, I, I, I've been thinking a lot about Donald Trump lately. So normally, my, for the last couple of years, I have not been giving Donald Trump much credit. I've just kind of been ignoring him. He seems like an angry, scared guy. And I've seen so many angry, scared people come and go that I know that giving them attention can lead to more anger and more fear. But if you listen to them with compassion, angry, scared people, they're trying to express themselves and want to be loved. They just might be angry or afraid. And it's like, if you really listen to them, then they're less angry and they get less afraid. And they're like, oh, someone understands me. And watching the Republican National Convention, this the fourth one, the last one, was really rewarding. I didn't expect it to be. I was I've started to make a video insulting Donald. Like you're afraid, but then I, and I heard someone like across the apartment complex, which is over here, like you know all these buildings out there. Someone over in that direction was listening to Donald. Was listening to the convention. I was like, oh yeah, fuck it. So I put it on, and it wasn't bad. And it, it made me start thinking about immigration. Like, Donald's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. And he says some ex he had said some extreme stuff like immigration. So I'm, I've always been like a huge advocate of like, bring people to the United States. This is the melting pot. The, the reason we're so great is because if a 14-year-old Iranian kid it wants to come to Los Angeles and become the next world-famous actor, he can because America's culturally great. Um... He speaks perfect English, and we invite him with open arms to come here, become a citizen, enrich our country and the world as a result. So to stifle that because you're afraid that someone might hurt you is crazy. All the good people that can come heavily outweighs the bad, especially if we're nurturing our enemies, if we're helping them to become better people, then we don't really have any enemies. You look at it, we see it that way. You know, that's the kind of the, the arc light. That's what we need to, to change within ourselves is to look at your enemy as your friend. We don't really have enemies. We have competition for resources, maybe. So if you see somebody that's starving, it's your job to, to help them. Don't just sit in your fucking walls and, and wait for them to die or to go away or to stop being hungry like that's not how it works man we're whether we want it or not we're in this together and blocking blocking our borders indiscriminately to, to like a country that has is on a terror watch list is crazy because there's so many good people like if you get on the internet and random chat with somebody in china iran Saudi Arabia, like a, just a citizen, not not someone from the oppressive government, just a regular citizen. Dude, they are fucking down. It's just like me and you. They're just like us. Now, that being said, this has been a bitter pill for me to swallow, the immigration debate, because I've always been so open about just let anyone in. But I understand that you have to mediate border patrol. You have to have some sort of order to your, the influx of occupants. You can't, you can't just, if you just let everyone come over here, they just, they'll just, everyone will come over here. It's like if I leave my doors unlocked and have a public notice saying, hey, anyone that needs a place to stay, anyone that's hungry, come on over. I've tried that in my life by going on YouTube innocently bearing my soul and offering my place. And I met amazing people, absolutely amazing people would come over to just random people from like Dave from Australia, um, miles from England. Like these people would just like be like, Hey, Hey, Ian, I, I want to come stay with you for a week. I'd be like, sweet. I barely knew him, but yeah, my doors are open and it was awesome, but it was exhausting as fuck. And I did feel like I was taken advantage of because not everyone's, really nice all the time you know people come from angry backgrounds and this is like looking at like a, a violent person like a terrorist the worst case scenario you invite someone to your home they, they come into your home and they murder you and I'm sure that that has happened and that's why we have locks on our doors and it's why you look through the peephole sometimes before you open your at least in a big city when there's lots of foot traffic and you hear a knock at the door 
It could be the delivery man. It could be a man with a gun. It could be the landlord. It could be your long lost brother. You know, but you, you don't know. You don't just, you have to have security. And, um, and I get like this, this closed border policy is like, I don't like it because I have a friend in Iran right now and she's, I think she's Persian. And, which I guess is Iranian, or um, the thought that just with the flip of a switch she can never come here is is gut wrenching. It doesn't make any sense. It's like if you're trying to to net a fish, and you end up with all this junk in your net was it worth it you you caught the fish but all that junk like and that's not the best analogy i guess but like if you're fishing for a terrorist i hate the word terrorist too like instilling terror demagogues can instill terror someone can get up on a podium and talk and instill terror in people and then they're the terrorists so yeah, the guy that did the violence might be a, might also you might think he terrorized some people, but if the people on the in the media are like telling you to be afraid, then they're a terrorist. They're they're instilling terror. So just just use the words right. I don't I don't know if blockading the fu blockading the borders is not the answer. No one thing. Well, if you if you if you're like just afraid and you don't want to think about it. It's an easy, seems like an easy solution, but it's not what makes countries great. Blockading your fellow humans from being a part of your journey is not like the best first step. So Don, I'm down with what you're saying about peace and love, pulling out of the fucking wars, renegotiating this insane globalist trade deals that are seeing corporations take power over government. Fuck that shit. The government has the power. Down with the Federal Reserve. Let's take our money back. And let's make a pro... Let's start to actually make profit. Stop fucking income taxing people. We don't need to be paying taxes to these Federal Reserve... This, these global bankers. The United States does function well as an idiosyncratic... Uh, eso, esoteric conglomeration that's 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 a real big way to say it but we work well as, as a idealist uh you know um what do you call it a union i guess you would call it but like uh individual the united states functions well as an individual country globalism is great but only if you're doing it for the right reasons if you're globalizing because you want one currency and you want these people that print and control the currency to own the world that's not the right form of unification like making everyone a slave and then saying that everyone's unified is not the kind of unification i want i want a generalized localized decentralized unification using the technology we have like the internet it's not 1790 it's a new world and we have new technologies so we need to rewrite the rules i'm totally down with rewriting the constitution taking all the good stuff from it looking around the world all the like the icelandic constitution taking pieces from all these other constitutions man that's where we're at i'm drinking coffee this is my daily rant i don't even know if i got out what i wanted to get out when i started talking but but uh, I got out some stuff. I got out some stuff. Thank you for CJ for giving me this cup. It's definitely one of my favorite cups. It, just because it's so massive, I can fit like an entire pot of coffee in here almost. And then I put coconut oil in it and uh, cardamom. See ya.